In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a wine or a cider out of store-bought juice. So let's get started. All right, so in front of me, you see I have four different kinds of store-bought juices, and I have two bottles of each one. So in this video, I am gonna show you how to make a wine or possibly a cider out of each one of these. And I am gonna show you the difference between using, um, I'll say, not, uh, I'll say cheaper yeast, quote, which is your Fleischmann's Active Dry Yeast. It's stuff you can get basically a ton of it for super cheap. And uh, I'm versing that versus like a wine yeast. So this is a Lavin D47 packet, widely used for wine making and mead making and those various things. So in each one of these, in like these four in the front, I'm gonna put the bread yeast and these four in the back. I'm gonna put the wine yeast. And what I'll, I'm hoping to show you is that using a nicer yeast will yield a better uh, quality product, um, even with something as simple as this. So. The first step, you don't have to do this, but I would highly recommend, if you can, to know how alcoholic your product is gonna be, I would take a gravity reading. So what you're gonna need is some, you don't really even have to have this, you need a hydrometer to float inside of the liquid. So I'm gonna go ahead and float this in here, see where it lands, and then write down my information so I know exactly how high the gravity is for each one of these. You want to float your hydrometer in the mead. So this is floating at 1.058 roughly. I turn the hydrometer around and it looks like I'm at about 7.4% or I can use this website, which tells me exactly what my ABV will be, assuming that I end at 1.000. Now that my gravity readings are done, um, I forgot that some of these are not tall enough. So my hydrometer actually hit the bottom. I had to put them into here. If you need to get a really big cup or a long tube like this, if you're taking your gravity reading, put your hydrometer in, make sure it floats. If you're using the exact same juices as me, so this is Crayon Pineapple Ocean Spray juice. Um, every, I mean, throughout the nation, these should be the exact same. Your starting gravity is 1.048. If you're using Juicy Juice, Cherry Juice, which is, um, you know, whatever standard, that is 1.050. If you're using the Welch's grape juice, 1.068 for the starting gravity on that. And great value apple juice is 1.050. Here's the most important thing. You can do this with other juices, that's fine. You have to ensure that there is zero potassium sorbate in these juices, if you do this. Potassium sorbate is a um, is a preservative slash something they put into lots of different foods to kill bacteria and they also kill yeast, anything from really growing. So if you put your yeast into something that has potassium sorbate into it, the yeast won't function. They will just basically die. So next step is really, really simple. I'm going to put one gram of each of my yeasts in here. So. I'm gonna put one gram of the um, bread yeast into each one of these, and then one gram of my Lavin D47 into these, and I'll be right back. I have all of my yeast put in, um, and you can see maybe that some of these are falling to the bottom, and that's pretty normal. So what I'm gonna do real fast is I'm gonna put my lids on all of these and I'm going to shake them up a little bit and then um, I will show you how to make sure that the um, you know product product can breathe so we want these to be able to breathe a little bit because whenever this starts to ferment it will try and shoot uh, co2 or the yeast will produce co2 and it has to go somewhere so if you just cap this then there's a chance it'll explode on you so don't do that um, what I'm gonna do, I have cheesecloth here. You can do this with really anything else, but this is cheesecloth and I am going to take and cut a little piece of it to go over this like that. And then I will put my lid back on 
and I will puncture a hole in the top of this so the air can escape. So you see here, I don't want to turn this because it'll fall over, but this is the cheesecloth on top. The cheesecloth is to make sure there's this hole here. It's not big enough to let anything in, like any bugs or anything, but the cheesecloth just really ensures that if something were to try to get down there, it couldn't because it's so tiny. So uh, I have a tiny hole for CO2 to escape. Let me go ahead and do that with the rest of these, and then I'll tell you the next step. Everything's ready to go ahead and ferment. Now, you could do the same process. You could take this lid off and put a balloon, stretch it over there, poke a tiny hole in that balloon, and you'll see it you know, fill up and basically release CO2 in the same way. Essentially, what we're creating is what's called an airlock. Now, you can also do the same process if you wanna use real equipment like glass containers and that stuff. However, for the sake of this video, um, you could ferment exactly this way. So very soon after you start this, you should start to see some bubbling and I will show, I'll show you what that looks like essentially. The fermentation process is very clear that something's happening within them. The biggest thing here is wine yeast is intended to retain flavors from fruits and things that create wine essentially. Whereas bread yeast was essentially made to um, make bread, which is less controlled. So. I will tell you the taste difference between these, but I'll give you a little bit of update and then, I'll, they will, then we will taste test them and see what the difference is between them. So let's go ahead and start fermenting. So it's been roughly about 24 hours and they all started fermenting pretty quickly. You can kind of see here that this is what your fermentation should look like roughly. So right there, that's just a bunch of CO2 bubbles and each one of them has that happening with it essentially right now. That one's a little harder to see. But all of them are fermenting. Okay, it's been two weeks. I've been waiting for these to finish and they have. You can tell that your brew has finished if there is low to zero bubbles. Like right now you see the bubbles are really, really slow. That means that the yeast are finished. Um, it'll probably degas a little bit. You'll also see, for example, a small layer of sediment or yeast at the bottom. I have taken a gravity reading of all of them just a moment ago, and they have all leveled out to 1.000, meaning I'll show you the ABVs for each one of these on screen um, according to their starting gravity and now their final gravity. My next step is going to be do, going to do a taste test, and then I'll show you the um, kind of next thing you can do with these in the future. All right, here we are for the taste test portion of this. It has been about two and a half weeks since these started fermenting. They've all finished. As you can see, and I just showed you, the bubbling has slowed down, meaning that the yeast are pretty much done. And I know they're done because I did a gravity reading and they've all leveled out. So uh, I'll give you that information in a moment. But we're here to taste test the difference. I have set this up. We don't know which one is which. So for example, these are two glasses of our uh, crayon pineapple one right here and one is the bread yeast one is the wine yeast we don't know which one is which we're gonna taste test and um, choose which one we like more at the very end I'll tell you uh, which one is the one that's better this is Reed he's, uh, he's been on the channel many times before and uh, I'm glad to have him on to help me do this so we're gonna go ahead and get started um, let's just start first off let's uh, I didn't put them in the same order. We'll start over here. So this is the uh, Juicy Juice Cherry Juice. And that's that one right one? there. Yep. Okay. So, um, so obviously we don't know which one's which, so I don't, I'm not going to tell you which one to taste first. All We're just right. going to taste test real fast and then we'll come back and we'll give some notes about which what we think. So okay. let's go and taste test and see. Nope. I have a favorite. I have a clear favorite. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So <laughs> we're taste testing the difference between these two. One, one is a little cloudier, cloudier than the other. Yeah. And I'm trying not to look at the bottom of it. But uh, this this one right here is a little clear and you can't quite see. And it has a, um, I feel like it retained a little more juice flavor, more cherry-esque. I yeah. think I'm talking about that one. I think. Yeah, this one. Is yeah. that the one you prefer? Yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, this one, it's it's muddy. It's, it's uh, sour. It is kind of sour, and I I lose like I had to ask. I was like, "Is this cherry?" Yeah. Because yeah. it it tasted like any kind of fruit. 
Yeah, like anything. It had quite some quite some bite. Okay, so yeah. we're gonna put the one we prefer in the front. Um, okay. So I'm gonna put that one since it's pretty the front. This one behind. We're gonna move on now to our straight up normal apple juice um, that you can get. So here we are. This one is mega clear though, and you can tell. I think yeah. yeah can you tell the clear. carbonation difference? This, I mean, yeah, it looks like it's a little carbonated. Yeah, there's the um, you, a lot more bubbles at the bottom. Mm -hmm. The legs, I think, is what those are called. So oh, really? this has some, yeah, the legs are what cling to the glass in the whatever wine world. Um, this one definitely looks a little more still. Let's, yeah. let's taste test these. That has has the legs on it, the, the carbonation, the bubbles sticking. Yep. It is a little more tart to me. Um, I don't know. I think it's that one. This here. one? Yeah. Just slightly more tart, more a little more sour tasting. Um, it's not as apple-y as I thought it might be. Like this one that has no legs on it. I prefer, I prefer this one, whichever side. It, it definitely, both of them retained... I, I have to say I disagree. Oh, really? I, I like the one with the with, with a little more tart? bubbles more. Yeah, I okay. think. I mean, I don't know if maybe it's. I don't know. There's definitely. I think it has a little bit more residual sweetness, and I. I don't know. I feel like I get more apple on the interesting on okay. the one with the bubbles as opposed to this one. Yeah, they're both, they're not bad. Like neither of them, like the last one. There's not yeah, a clear, yeah, it's like, not a terrible, clear, yeah. But, Okay, well, I definitely prefer okay. for the, whatever that one is. I don't know. Again, we don't know what's, what's what at this point. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on to just normal grape juice land. Okay. The Welch's grape juice. This is the one people swear by. So let's see which one's better. Here we go. No visible difference between mm -hmm. them. I think mine might be a little... We got a little bit of the, the bubble going yeah, on that one. Slightly. But... Well, it very clear. smells very... Grape juice just has such a strong. Mm -hmm. It's like someone left the communion out a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one tastes a little, a little stale to me. Like, yeah. This one's a bit more vibrant. It tastes a little. Uh... Are you talking about? You're talking about the one. Okay. The one on on my mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it just tastes like a little bit, a little bit brighter, a little bit more lively, and yeah, this one just has a little bit of a stale, not off, but just. Yeah, I almost prefer this. There's there is some extra bite I feel like with this one specifically mm -hmm. the the bubble I don't know, a little more bitterness to it. Yeah. But this one it, it does feel a little stale. You're right. The. Maybe that brightness is actually kind of nice. Brings out some of that fruit. Okay. Well. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. This one's a little... It does have that stale, um, dark... It's very dark-toned. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Maybe it will It would be more complex as it aged, but yeah. just right now. And our last one, um, this is the Cran Pineapple, uh, and I, I have a good I'm interested feeling about this one. one. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like when a good When I was choosing combo. the juices, I was like, what would be... What could be good? Mm -hmm. You know? Same thing as the, I feel like the grape juice. This one actually... I think there's a slight difference. There's a slight more haziness in my right hand. Same. Yep. So, this one is a little more clear. Mm -hmm. They both have a, a decent amount of bubbling, decent amount of legs, kind of. Oh, maybe the right one. I don't know. The the one that has less clarity is definitely... Has a little more bubbling action. Yeah. Let's taste it. Alright. Mmm. Very bright. Like the nose. It smells like That's juice. That's nice. Yeah, no, I... But this is definitely, so far, my favorite. Yep, by far. Okay. Wow. Man. Yeah, the nose on it smells just like oh. the normal juice. You don't get any alcohol, yeah. anything. This could be like a trash can punch. It could point. be. Because you don't really get a lot of alcohol in the actual uh, uh, drink is at all. No, it's like smooth already. Ooh, that um, slight, slight... Bite carbonation in the more hazy one. Yeah, that's kind of nice. It is kind of nice. Yeah, like that's a. Ooh, oh, it's also got some. Um, I get a little minty. I don't know. 
Uh, like a... Yeah, almost. Makes me think of... Hmm. I guess it's like, like maybe the cran. I don't know. It, I guess it, yeah, the citrus from the cranberry. This one, man. Yeah, that's really good. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely I my totally favorite of, the, yeah. of all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's figure out, in our opinions, now this is not the end all be all of opinions, but this is our opinions, which one tasted better? So let's first start with the cherry. So what was your, look at the bottom real fast. All right, let's Which see. was your favorite? This is that was wine. This was the wine. Yep. Yes. So we both picked the wine yeast for this one. Um, I think that that bread yeast had something. Something happened with it, it. Yeah. It just tastes a little, a little funky, a little off. Bread yeast can work for things. I've done it a mm -hmm. lot, but in this case, I think it was a bit much. Yeah. Um, apple juice. Okay. Okay. I can't remember if we disagreed on this. Uh, one. I think we did. I picked the wine yeast. Uh, oh. Well, I did as well. Okay. No, oh, I guess they were just. Switched on the table. But maybe so, okay. yeah. Okay, well, we both... <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought we disagreed, but... I thought, maybe maybe I thought it was switched or something, but I guess we picked the same one. Uh -huh. So, uh, we picked both uh, wine yeast for this one. I thought it was one... I think we did have a little bit of a disagreement, but... Maybe we were switched. We yeah. thought the other one was... It's not... I do think that this apple juice, if I was ranking these so far in, like, the actual workhorse of the yeast... Apple juice is probably my second favorite. That cran pineapple yeah, is freaking awesome. I think I agree with All you. right, last one. Or not last one. And grape juice. Okay. Wine yeast. Yep. Okay. Man, wine yeast is clean okay. sweet. Yep. Again, we have we did not uh, know what was what. No. We were just taste no testing idea. wine. And uh, the cran pineapple. The last one is. Wine yeast. Yep. Man, that full <laughs> clean sweet. Yep. Okay. So I think there's, there's a point to be proven here. Um. I will say I was a little surprised by I thought the wine yeast to be the most clear for all of them. Yeah. And like in this case, the the cran pineapple. It's definitely. It's more hazy. Yeah, it which definitely is. Interesting. is. But it it it, it uh, retained the. I think the fruit flavor a little yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely has like a more clean taste, and it did yeah it didn't muddy any of the waters. I mean it's. And that's, that's a huge thing for me. Like the reason we use wine yeast is because it's specifically made to retain flavors mm -hmm. when you brew wine, when you brew mead or whatever you're doing. And bread yeast can do some of that, but most of the time it's just a general fermenter. It just, yep. there's no control. Yep. So I, I think that's a clear sign that wine yeast is the better choice if you're going to, um, choose between using bread or wine yeast mm -hmm. can you use bread yeast yes if you don't have wine yeast it's not the end of the world in fact yeah i mean these are these, all drinkable the only one that was not great and i think it was just something might have happened was the cherry yeah the other three were, yeah. were really okay honestly i mean between these two the uh what is this the cran pineapple yeah they're both delicious yeah it's just one i'm is... thinking about just keep them on <laughs> put <laughs> yeah. them on tap that's yeah, pretty why good not? yeah um, okay, so I'm now going to teach you what you can do post um, making it, how you can maybe improve the brew, bottle it, and do those things. So thank you, Reed, for helping me with this taste test. Yep, you're welcome. Appreciate you. Okay, so you just saw the tasting side, and it was pretty clear that the wine yeast was much better than the bread yeast. Can you use bread yeast? Absolutely. I don't want to discourage anybody from using it to say it's bad. It just did not make it as nice of a product. Let's talk about the next steps. So let's say you've made this, um, made your brew, whatever, whichever one you chose. You have a couple options. I'm, I'm just going to use one of these as an example for the rest of them. So let's say I wanted to move on to the next step of this apple juice or apple cider is basically what it is. Um, first thing you can do, you want to move it off of the yeast that are here. So what I have, I've sanitized everything I'm going to be using today, including this, which is just a pitcher. So I'm actually going to take, and this is not using any equipment, by the way. I'm just going to use uh, no equipment at all. Uh, I'm going to take and lightly pour this apple juice um, into here. And I'm going to try and not get the sediment there at the bottom. So let me do this real fast. Just lightly. I'm going to also try to not oxygenate this, even though I'm getting a little oxygen in right now. It's not great, but this is a no equipment option. So let me pour this in real fast. With me having lightly poured this, I have kept the yeast there at the bottom. So now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and rinse this out real fast. We're gonna use this same container um, as to not have to worry about using anything else. 
you don't want to age in plastic for a long time. So this resolve is not great for, let's say you wanted to keep this in here for six months. This resolve is good for maybe a month, maybe two months at max. Let me clear, uh, let me rinse this out real fast. Now that this is empty and we've gotten the yeast that we're at the bottom out, we're gonna take and go ahead and lightly, again lightly, pour this back into here for storage. With this back in here, we could now let this sit for maybe another month or two at max. Again, plastic is not good for aging in for long term. So let's say that I wanted to just age this and drink it over time. I could throw my cap back on. This thing will keep any yeast or anything out because it has just enough room for oxygen to get out. You can also at this point, if you have a normal ap apple juice cap, you could probably just put it on because um, there, there's a little bit of degassing. You just want to open every once in a while to let any uh, CO2 get out. From here, you could drink it. You could go ahead and bottle it. Um, and the bottling process is exactly what we just did, but you would take and get maybe some wine bottles, maybe some beer bottles, and lightly pour it in. Um, and then you'd have to have a capper of some sort to do that. So let's say that you have this here now and you go, it's not sweet enough. I would like to make this better, which is a very valid criticism. If you're drink drinking something like this that is, um, you know, supposed to be a little sweet and it is dry like this, you're gonna add some sugar. In order to do, the, to do this, you have to stabilize this, which means you use potassium sorbate. Potassium sorbate is a stabilizer. You can get it at brew shops, Amazon, online sources in general. All of that will help to kill any possible fermentation here. Even though we racked off the yeast, there's still a chance some are thriving in there. If you were to add more sugar on top of this right now, um, the yeast that are still in here would start to reproduce again and eat that sugar, which then just makes it go away, makes it turn into alcohol again. And you want to keep the sugar. So you would stabilize with potassium sorbate, wait about 24 hours, maybe add your regular table sugar, your honey, your maple syrup, your whatever you're trying to add to it. And uh, that's, that's an option. So, um, and of course, at that point, once it's back sweetened and you notice that there is no more re-fermentation, it's safe to go ahead and bottle and you could pour and do that stuff. If you want to do this a little more officially and uh, have, a less, have a less likely chance of um, oxygenating your mead, you can get something called an auto siphon. This thing helps you to move any of your brew over as you're doing it. So this thing, it literally just, you put it in the brew, you pump some and it moves the liquid into a different container and it uh, makes it less likely to have oxygen. Oxygen is terrible for alcohol, just to let you know. So it's very risky when I'm just pouring this into something else because oxygen is getting into it. But that's the basics of this. This thing right here, all of these are really pretty good. And my favorite by far is this Cran Pineapple as it was for Reed. So he really liked that. Um, I would love to know what you think. Maybe you've done this before with some other brew, which is awesome. Um, maybe you have a different juice you'd like to use as a base. But this has been a store-bought cider. Now, of course, I didn't do the bottling process, and I'm sorry, I didn't do uh, the back sweetening process, but they are very simple, and I'll make sure and throw it up again right here, right now. If you want to back sweeten this thing, you have to first get some potassium sorbate, put potassium sorbate into the brew, and then wait about 24 hours. And that next point, you can add your sugar, however much you want to use to sweeten it to your taste. And then uh, if you're gonna bottle either the sweet version or just the regular version, you can let this thing age maybe in this plastic for a month or two at max. Then you can either buy an auto siphon and bottle or rack it into each bottle and cap or cork your bottles, or you can pour very, very lightly. Just a reminder though, oxygen is bad for the brew. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been a store-bought cider. Um, my, I've actually, the wine yeast version of this Cran Pineapple, um, we were already, we were just drinking in there a few minutes ago because it's pretty fantastic. So let me know what you think. Hit like and subscribe if you wanna support the channel, and uh, I'll see you guys next time in a future video. Cheers.